So what do I got going on here today? Well, we're making bottle openers. We're laser, laser etching, not engraving, but etching these anodized aluminum bottle and can openers. And I'm doing them for a, a particular, I've done them for a lot of things. I'm, this time I'm doing them for a, a international golf tournament that's going to be held here locally. And each one of the participants will get one of these. And I, so I need to make a lot of them. And I mean a lot of them. So what do I have here? This is a jig. And what I was going to originally do, after I bought a couple hundred of these, like this, was uh, design a jig and 3D print something to uh, put all these in. And I got to thinking, you know, I wonder if somebody's already done that. So I went and looked at Thingiverse, and yep, sure enough, somebody already designed one. And it's designed not only for them to go in there upright like this, but there is a second opening in here. I moved that ring out of the way where you can engrave the other side of it as well. So you could also set one in there like this and engrave the back side of it if you needed to. I'm only engraving one side of this. Uh, for this project I'm using the WeCreate 45, Vision Pro 45 right behind me here. You can also do this on a regular dial laser. You don't have to have the WeCreate one. I'm, it's just handy for this and I'm going to go on the computer I'm going to show you how to get set up. Uh, what we're going to do is create an array and what an array is, is a series of the same thing in both columns and rows and that lays it out on your jig and then you can group that and save it and then because I need to repeat this a lot of times so you and you can also do this in light burn if you have a, uh, some other brand laser and it doesn't matter what it is if it's compatible with light burn you can also create an array in light burn and do the same type of thing uh, here again, I'm just using the week rate. It's handy right here, and it has that marvelous camera on it with the what you see is what you get. So if something isn't quite lined up on there after it does its focus, I can see that, and I can make any kind of corrections I need to do. So with that said, I'm going to get you on the computer here. I'm going to show you how we get this all laid out. Okay, i got a, a blank canvas up here. Okay, so how do you create an array? Well, I'm going to take and uh, pop my uh, graphic down in here. I guess I need to go copy that first. Okay, I'm going to paste my uh, graphic in here. So there we are. So uh, actually, I'm going to center that here so it just makes it a little bit easier to work with. Go up here to create an array, array creation. Now we need to know some spacing here. I'm doing this in m and so it's millimeters for, yeah, I might drive some of you uh, crazy that just work in inches, but it's metric systems easy. Don't let, don't be intimidated by it. So, column numbers. We're going to have three columns. And we're going to have six rows. Um, I'm just going to put some numbers here. I don't remember exactly what that column spacing was. I think it was 24 millimeter. And my row spacing, I think think was 18. I may be a little wrong on that. So I can confirm that. Now these are not grouped. So what we need to do first here, if we're going to start moving this, let's highlight everything and group it. That way you're not moving things all over the place. So now we'll recenter this again. And I guess I need to connect to my device. Well, it's connected with the other project, but you get the idea here on how to create this array. So I'll go back to my other project here where I've already got this created, and we'll work from that one. So I'll go up here to openers. So here's the one I just finished. Uh, what I need to do here is uh, refresh the view because I just loaded a new palette of openers in there. So we'll let that refresh its view. And there we go. So you can see my... Uh, Graphics are just a hair off because the way I placed the grid back in there may not have been perfect. But before I go to change anything, I'm going to go to autofocus here and let that focus everything. Then it will do a refresh after it focuses and then I can reposition my graphic if I like. Since I have a group, they will all move together. So the autofocus failed, it may have tried to focus on a spot where there was nothing, so we'll hit it again. 
I've had that happen before. Not a big deal. Okay, I've got to kind of go back to scratch here a little bit. Uh, my project shut down here for some reason. I don't know why. So I've got to go over and change my material. We're doing metal. And we're doing stainless steel. Or no, we're now doing aluminum. And I, I'll do coated black. It, I've done the different coated ones and it's all come out the same. So it hasn't made any difference. So we've got that taken care of. We're going to be doing a fill and grave at 78% power and 10 millimeters per second with one pass. Uh, so what I need to do now is reconnect here. And as you can see, my graphics are off. So I'm just going to kind of scoot them over to kind of where they belong. And it's still off, but we're going to do the autofocus here. Okay, we are focused, and now you can see everything's a little bit closer. I still need to make some minor adjustments, and I can do that just with the arrow keys on the keyboard here. And I can blow this up to get a, a better look at it. And I see that my jig is not in there quite straight, so I'm going to go fix that. Okay, now that I've got my jig in there straight, and what I'll be doing after I get done with this video is I'll be actually screwing that jig down to that uh, swell board I have in there. Uh, which incidentally is just a piece of half inch MDF with some uh, one centimeter square uh, squares etched in it. It makes it easy to line things up. And I do this with all my lasers. It just makes it easier. Of course that's not suitable for cutting, but for engraving it's perfect. Here again we're using 78% power, 10 millimeters per second with one pass. Everything looks good here. So I will hit start. Well, it says I got to do autofocus again. So, okay, we'll do autofocus again. That might be because I opened the lid and moved the jig. And it has refreshed, and everything still looks good, just like it's supposed to. Now we'll hit start. Okay, it's uh, two minutes and 56, or two minutes, two hours, 56 minutes, 36 seconds, does 18 of these. So, we'll hit send. Now I have to hit the button on the front of the laser, which I just did. You didn't get to see that, but this will bring up a little progress screen on here shortly. And there it is. So you it's processing and it will go on and it will do its thing and I'll come back in three hours and take this next batch off. So we got a little bit of noise going on now because I've got the, the laser grinding behind me here, but that's how you make these uh, bottle openers like this. And let's see you get the... You get lots of different colors when you buy a bag of those and the ones you cannot use without coating first are the silver ones because there's no anodizing on them and they will not etch. But all of the other colors and it doesn't matter what color it says on here, the gold ones and the blue ones and the purple ones and the red ones and the black ones all in etch the same with the same setting. 78% power, 10 millimeters per second and these are real handy things for, uh, for this case it's for a golf tournament. But, uh, you know, golfers out there, you got to be able to pop a top every once in a while. And these will not only open a bottle, they've also got the little tab down here to get under there with a can and pop it open. And women really like that with their fingernails. They don't like breaking their fingernails off, popping a can open. And not just beer, but soda, pop, soft drinks as well. So I'll put a link in the description where to get these two. I'm not sponsoring anybody here. This is just something we make for different events. And I thought I would bring this up, show you how you could do it on the uh, We Create Vision Pro here. It's a good laser, but the what you see is what you get feature on it. And the camera is extremely accurate. And you're, you have the ability to create an array, and you can do a bunch of these at a time. And there again, you can also do it on a regular dio laser. You don't have to have the We Create. Uh, any dio laser will do it. Just remember you are etching the uh, anodizing off of these. You are not engraving the metal. You want to actually engrave the metal. You need to go to an IR laser or fiber laser, or perhaps a UV laser. You cannot do it with a uh, dial laser. Well, that said, if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Uh, be a link in the description on uh, where I got this jig from, a Thingiverse. Where to get these? Here, these came on Amazon. You can also get them on AliExpress, or Alibaba, and I'll also put a link in the description on where you can get one of these sweet great lasers. If you're new to the laser world and don't know anything about it. This is a great entry point. No, they're not cheap. 
They are definitely not the cheapest laser on the market, but they are by far one of the easiest ones to use out of the box if you have no experience, especially if uh, you don't want to go through a learning curve or a light burn. And their We Create Makeup software is free. Uh, it's free download and you can make whatever you want on here. So that said, I'm Roger in the Loft Brothers Shop. See you in the next one.